We'd like to welcome everyone today to Central Baptist Church in Woodbridge, Virginia. I'm Pastor Brad Winnegar, and uh, we are here broadcasting from the auditorium of Central Baptist. It is the first Sunday in the month of October 2021. It's October the 3rd, and this is Missions Emphasis Month. And everybody, we need to talk about, we need to think about, we need to to breathe, eat, sleep, and live missions this month and get uh, revived when it comes to the matter of reaching out and sharing the gospel with lost folks. We are so glad. The, the Bible teaches us that this is God's great concern. God loves you and He loves me, but He wants to love the world through us. Do you understand that? A lot of people will say, well, God loves me and it's all about me. Well, it's all about Him working through me. Can you say that? It's all about Him working through me. It's not just about me. It's about Him working through me. So the question is, is God working through you? Are you allowing Him to touch the lives of, of lost souls with the gospel because of your yielded life, my yielded life, my life given over to Him? That's it. That's what it's all about. Come on in and have a seat. Welcome to Sunday School. Welcome to all those that are viewing this broadcast wherever you are in this area or a long ways away. We've got some folks a long distance away. So glad that they're listening and viewing today. All right, 2 Peter. Find it in your Bible. 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We don't want to be slack. We don't want to be slackers. We don't want to be lazy. We want to be active. We want to be alive when it comes to God's purpose. For our life. 2 Peter 3 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us. He's very patient, more patient than we put all of our patience together. God is more patient than all of our patience together. All right, long suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish. Not just many, but not any should perish, but that all should come. To repentance. Repentance is a change of mind leads to a change of heart and a change of direction. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. That word perish, a terrible word. When you think about people perishing, when they're perishing, they're not just ceasing to exist. No, no, no. There's an awful place called hell. God didn't prepare it for you and for me. God prepared it for the devil and his angels. We need to be aware of that. We need to be thinking about that. People who don't get saved Go to that awful place reserved for the devil and his angels. It's a place called hell. God doesn't want you to go there. If you go to hell, if your family goes to hell, it goes to hell over the love of God, over the best efforts of soul winners and churches like this one right here and like folks like you who are viewing today. God bless you. Listen, back in 1882, it hit the hymnals. It was the song to sing in 1882, it's a song that goes like this. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus what? Saves. Jesus saves. That's it. We're going to sing that with great enthusiasm today, and we're going to sing some folks in. Amen. Amen. You'll find you burning the hymn book today. Take that out, please, and turn with me to number 281. And would you please stand with me as we sing Jesus Saves, number 281. Lift our voices up together and sing now. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. That Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the ways to every land. Life the streets across the way. On the days our Lord's command. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Above the path of strife, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. I am dead in this life, and Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing the soft and through the blue, when the heart for mercy prays. Sing the lion for the prey, Jesus saves. He 
Give the winds a mighty voice. Give the winds a mighty voice. believe that today say amen. amen amen good sing remain stand for prayer if you will please thank you so much all right good singing all right let's get started with prayer we want God to bless if God's not in it we're not going to be blessed so we need him to be here and we need him to bless we need to allow him to work in our hearts so let's do that right now bow our heads and close our eyes whether you're here whether you're out there I want you just to say a silent prayer and say Lord I want you to to speak to my heart. I want you to reach in and, uh, and grab onto my heart and make a difference. And Lord, we do pray that. We pray that right now there might be a great difference that will occur in this place and around the world as people are viewing and are part of this service. Thank you so much for what you're doing in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, we have... We've got a good group of young people over here. It is Sunday school hour. Last week, we had a breakout time. Today, we're going to have a huddle time. Now, a huddle is smaller than a breakout. If you, if you experience a breakout, that's about a 30-minute uh, experience. But if you experience a huddle, that's about a 15-minute experience. So at the end today, your teacher, your leader, is going to be chatting with you right there over in that area. Now, while you're here, and for all the adults as well, and for you out there at home and those that are viewing from hotels and hospitals, need to, need to put up all your other electronics. When you're in the services here, don't even have your electronics out. And uh, if you've got to have one because your mom said you've got to be able to call home and keep in contact, that's fine. But nobody is connecting here. Nobody is using their phone or going on their electronics because we need your undivided attention. And, and all God's children said, yes, sir. Say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Very good. All right. I hope you understand that. So at the end, we're not going to have a breakout. Breakout's how long? 30 minutes. Instead, we're going to have a huddle, which is how much? 15 minutes. That's right. So you're going to have a, you're going to have a huddle right here on this side with your leaders, okay? Now, as soon as... As soon as we know that there is a Hispanic class going on downstairs, please inform us so we can get to Hispanic class also. So check it out. We'll see if there's a Sunday school class going on down there. If they're meeting, Brother Henry, not there yet? Okay, not yet. Okay, so welcome to our class. We're glad to have you here. <laughs> All right, amen. And I will, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fair at Spanglish, but if I need an interpreter, I got Tony back here. All right, so we're good. All right, praise the Lord. During the course of this month, we're going to talk a lot about missions. You can't see it from over here, but I've got a world globe. On the front of your literature today, you've got a globe, and that represents all of the nearly 200 sovereign nations of our world and the inhabited uh, continents. Uh, there's only one that is not naturally inhabited, and that's uh, Antarctica, and uh, the, rest, the rest of them are inhabited and we are supposed to reach out to every person regardless of their background, their language, their culture, whoever they are, what their name might be. We're supposed to reach out to them and give them the gospel. Next to my soul's salvation, the greatest thing that I can ever do, and the greatest thing that you can ever do is reach out to somebody and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not everybody is going to go to the four corners of the world, but other people are. To that end, we have a stewardship form which will be uh, distributed later on. You pray and ask God how much you're going to give by faith on a weekly or monthly basis. You mark it down. You don't sign your name. You tear this. You fold it, tear it in half. You keep one half. You keep the, uh, uh, the lower half, and you give the upper half in the offering plate, and that enables us to see how many more missionaries. See their pictures out here. How many more missionaries we can support. We want to keep on supporting our missionaries. Thank you to our YouTube viewers to help us 
uh, they're helping us to support so many missionaries around the world, so many different mission projects. This is fantastic. And uh, we don't have a lot of time. People are dying. People are dying all the time. We want to extend our condolences to Miss Jean. Uh, you remember Brother Ron who sits out uh, in the foyer on security? Remember Mr. Ron? Mr. Ron went to heaven. Mr. Ron has gone to heaven. So this, this visitor we call death can come to anybody. Come to anybody. All right? So that's not easy to say, but we, listen, we're still breathing. I've still got a pulse. I've, my heart's still beating. I've still, I'm still breathing. I can still do something, and so can you. If you've got a, a heartbeat, if you've got breathing going on, you can make a difference. You can win somebody to Jesus. You know, there's somebody that you're going to cross paths with that you'll make a difference with this week. Now, we haven't sung our kids' song, but we want to do that right now. So in your hymnal, turn to number 10. And just like, a, just like an invitation early, we want to sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. This is a missionary song. A prince in India uh, was, the, was the author of this song, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. All right, looks like we might have a Hispanic class going on. All right, let's sing together, shall we? Number 10 in your burgundy book. Sing it with me now. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turn. All the ladies and girls on the second. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Don't no one join me, still I will follow. Don't no one join me, still I will follow. No turning back, no turning. All the men and boys on the third, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me. cross before me, no turning back, no turning back. Everybody sing the verse, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning Thank you so much for playing. Thank you for singing. In the morning service during this month, we're also going to be talking about some other things. The last Sunday of the month is our 58th anniversary as a church, the 58th anniversary of Central Baptist Church. There have been some people here from the very beginning, and others have joined along the way. We're so glad for this church and all that it represents we're really promoting this month to get people out, you know, get them from their homes and get them here. And I want to invite you to come on out. And uh, listen, you'll be okay if you come on out. God will take care of you. And I want to encourage you to come on out when you're ready. Amen. But also, we are going to be promoting a paper known as the Sword of the Lord. We have free copies, which we will distribute at the end of the service. And everybody can have a copy. And there will be a subscription form. And when you write your check, you don't write your check to the church for this paper. You write it to the sword of the Lord and mail it in this envelope. Don't give us the envelope. You don't be cheap. You put a stamp on there. You mail it in. It costs just $20 a year to get this. Now, I'm, I'm a lifetime subscriber. Sword of the Lord will change your life. There are three full-length messages. There's something for the kids, something for the ladies, something for the soul winners, something for the bus workers. Something in here for everybody. There are current events, what's going on, so that you can cut through all the junk in the public media and know what's really happening and what the Bible really says. You need to get the sword of the Lord. At least one copy coming to every household and everybody reading it in the household. 
Dr. John R. Rice was the founder of this great paper back in the 1930s, and I wasn't alive then, but when I came along, one of the first things I heard about when I was a kid was the sword of the Lord. I thought it was a big old sword, but it's a paper, and it's even in Spanish now, La Espada. They have it in Spanish, and it's been translated into many languages, and Dr. John R. Rice came to our church when he was in his 70s, and you know, he went to heaven just before his 85th birthday, and... Uh, and he served the Lord long, and he did a wonderful... I remember him standing up and praying and saying, Now, Lord Jesus, we thank you for the sword of the Lord. We believe that you did. He, he cranked this out. He hand-typed the first copy and gave it to his family and had them go around town and give out free copies, hand-typed copies. And that's how the sword of the Lord started down in Dallas, Texas, years and years and years and years ago. It's almost 100 years ago now. Uh, it's coming up on, I think, 90 or something like that. And, and uh, Dr. John Rice, when he would pray, say, Now, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the 300,000 people who read the paper. Man, think about that. You can't hardly find... I don't think 300,000 people read the, that liberal thing over in Washington, D.C. But, uh, but 300,000 people reading his paper at the height of of the sword of the Lord. Back in the 1960s and 70s, I remember that. I remember him saying, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the 16,000 that have written in to say that they received Jesus because of the paper. Yeah. Last night, <clears throat> listening to some gospel music, trying to keep balanced in view of all of this heavy weight that's going on now. And uh, I'm so glad that God's in control and Jesus is still on the throne. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you today about the most important thing outside of your own salvation. The most important thing outside of your own salvation. When Henry Ford, how many of you know what a Ford automobile is? Can't hardly find one anymore. They're all foreign made. But... Uh, Ford automobile used to be that pe people depended on Ford that it was a uh, reliable one of just uh, several makes and models from the early days. And uh, Henry Ford was the man who came up with the assembly line and uh, he was the rich owner of the Ford Motor Company up in Detroit. And uh, there was uh, an article that appeared in the paper one time as Henry Ford was getting older. He thought it might be time to get himself some insurance. That was before everybody had to have insurance, back when you could choose to have insurance if you wanted it. And uh, he chose, when he was very, very old, to go ahead and, and uh, buy some insurance. So what did he do? Why, he, he contacted an insurance agent, and the newspapers picked up on it. The newspaper said, Henry Ford buys insurance from such and such an agent, such and such a company. And one of Henry Ford's good friends, who also was an insurance agent that he didn't buy the insurance from, got in contact with Henry Ford and said, hey, 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 this is in the newspaper. You, just, you weren't buying insurance. Now you bought insurance. You bought it from my competitor. You didn't buy it from me. I'm your friend. How come you didn't buy insurance from me? Listen to me. Henry Ford said, because you never asked me. You never spoke to me about insurance. I want you to think about something much more serious. If you know somebody that's not saved or you're not sure they're saved, when they die and go to hell someday, they'll stand at the great white throne judgment and they'll turn around and say, why did you never tell me? Why didn't you ever tell me how to be saved? It's simple. Here it is. If you've got Jesus Christ, you're saved. If you haven't got Jesus Christ, you're not saved. It's that simple. If you receive his free gift of eternal life, you're saved. There's nothing else plus that. Now, some people try to add all this stuff on there about, you know, you don't do this and don't do that, promise to do this, promise to do that. But none of that has to do with getting saved. Getting saved has to do with asking Jesus by faith to come in your heart, take away your sin problem, pay for your sin, and take you to heaven when you die. That's how simple it is. And someday, just like that insurance agent said, why didn't you buy insurance from me? And Henry Ford says, you never asked. 
And there'll be people who say, you never told me. You never, you never told me how to be saved. Now, up online, you can go on YouTube for CBC. It's youtube.cbcwoodbridge.org. And you can tap the, the selections and you can scroll down to the Soul Winning Clinic. And for two and some hours, two hours and some change, I will talk to you. I'll give you all that you need to know about how to win people to Jesus Christ. But today I want to, I want to encourage you about winning souls. I want to encourage you about sharing the gospel with, with other people. Everybody who's saved ought to be a soul winner. Jesus said so. And everybody can be a soul winner. Jesus said, follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. There it is. Fishers of men. A lot of people are not fishing. They haven't got, they're not prepared. They haven't got their, their hook or their net ready to go. They aren't prepared. They haven't cast their net or cast their line out there. And they are not interested in winning lost souls. But someday they'll be sorry. And right now, we need to do everything that we can possibly do. Because the Bible says, To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. How many of you think it's a good thing to win a soul to Christ? All right? Him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it's sin. It's sin if you don't win souls. It's sin if we don't do what we know is right. It's sin for us not to share the gospel. You say, how can I do that? Take a pocket full of tracts. You can buy some at the bookstore. You get some tracts, you can pass them out. You can share the back of the bulletin. It won't cost you a penny. You take a bulletin with you, and you take that bullet, back of that bulletin to all your neighbors and friends, and you say, I need you to read this and tell me what you think. And then when they get to the bottom, you say, what do you think? Would you like to pray and ask Jesus in your heart? I'll help you. And you lead them through the prayer, and you help them be a soul winner. You say, well, I'm just too shy. Is that what you're going to tell Jesus someday? You tell him you're too shy? When somebody is in a burning building, this house over on the corner burned. I'm glad everybody got out okay. But if it's burning and somebody's in there screaming and yelling, you say, I'm just too shy to go in there and help them. No, you go in there and you get them out of the fire. And that's what we need to do as soul winners every single day. It says in Psalm 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. Revelation 20, 15 says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mark 16, 16 says, He that believeth not shall be damned. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. He that hath the Son of God hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Period. It's just asking Jesus in your heart. Now, I know it's a big deal, but we make it too difficult. We need to make it simple and tell people, that without Christ, they're going to hell. They need Jesus so that they can't say, well, you never asked me, like Henry Ford said to that insurance agent. You never asked me. You never asked me. It was Edmund Burke who said, and we always quote this when it comes to all of us who are conservative, old-fashioned patriots. Praise God for conservative, old-fashioned patriots. I'm a conservative American patriot. But Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men do nothing. I do not want to be in heaven labeled as a DN Christian, a do-nothing Christian. I want to be able to do something for Jesus. I want to be able to tell someone about Jesus. I want to share the gospel some of you know our grandkids. Our grandson, Sammy, got convicted about his little neighbor. And I won't, name, I won't call the name of his little neighbor. But his little neighbor was five or six years of age at the time, I believe. And Sammy led him to Christ. And at the time, Sammy was eight. He led, he led his first soul to Christ at eight years of age. Now, he's heard his parents. He's heard his papa and his nana. And he knows all about it. But I tell you what, he started early and that's good. We all need to be winning souls to Jesus Christ. When, when uh, Preacher and uh, First Lady Gwendolyn were younger and we had little ones of our own, we would take them on visitation. We didn't let our kids keep us from going on visitation. 
We didn't let our kids keep us from going to church or being involved every time the church doors were open. And we would go out every week with those kids and go door to door. And when you knock on the door and they come to the door and here's little Bradley or little Brett and they're looking up and they're holding the track, who's going to turn that down? Nobody's going to turn that down. We all need to do it. You say, I'm just a kid. Just a kid is an advantage, not a disadvantage. Just a kid is an advantage. The love of Christ constraineth us. It says in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. We need to be soul winners. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Are you listening to me? I want you to be soul winners. I want you to do what God always intended you to, to do and to become, and that's a fisher of men's souls. That's it. That's it. You've got to let your candle burn from the very, very beginning. You don't burn the candle on the wrong end. You burn the candle on the right end. When the candle burns on the right end, it immediately shows light, doesn't it? Immediately. I'll never forget the young man down in Alabama. He got saved, and he was kind of special but he was able to go out and get himself a driver's license. And he said, I'm going to bring in people. And he would go out and get people and bring in folks just like himself. And we said, praise the Lord. He brought in a carload the first, first time they came out of the car. And I said, wow, that's fantastic. He said, I got another load. And he went back got another load of folks just like himself. And they were all a little special, but that's okay. That's all right. Jesus loves them. A lot of those folks got saved. And he got credit for it. He was so excited. It has been said that evangelism is the spontaneous overflow of a glad and free heart in Jesus Christ. Is your heart saved? Are you glad? You have a glad heart because Jesus saved you? Then it overflows. That's the abundant life. That's why we go soul winning. That's why we tell people about Jesus. Now in that clinic online, I give you four points very quickly. The Roman road. I want you to write this down. Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, Mr. Tellier, let me just tell you that I am a sinner. And Mr. Ortiz back there is a sinner. In fact, all of your relatives are sinners. In fact, the only person who ever lived that wasn't a sinner is Jesus Christ. We've all done something wrong. Mr. Tellier, I know that uh, you're probably the best guy on the block, maybe the best guy at your place of work, but you've told a lie or you've stretched the truth. You know, you've exaggerated uh, uh, maybe, maybe something in your past. You did took something that wasn't yours. But all of us are guilty before God. We're all sinners. Would you agree with that, Mr. Tellier? All right, the second thing is Romans 6, 23, the first part of it. The wages of sin is death. Wages, Mr. Tellier, are what we earn. And maybe we don't think we earn enough, but it's what we get paid for what we do. And the wages of sin is what we do. The wages of sin is death. That means separation. Death is separation. When your body dies, uh, you, your spirit separates from your body. You understand that? You're, you're, that? That dead body's not alive anymore. The spirit's gone. All right? When a person dies without Jesus, why, they're separate from God and from heaven and everything that's good and holy and wonderful forever. It's a separation. Eternal death is a separation from God and everything. No second chance. The wages, we've earned it. You understand that, Mr. Teller? Yes, you do. Okay, I, I deserve that too. I deserve hell. I don't want to go there, but I deserve that. But here's the good news. That's the bad news. The good news is number three, Romans 3, uh, 6.23b, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what a free gift is? If I reach in my pocket and I take out this pen and I say, Mr. Teller, this is a gift, and you go to grab it and I say, that'll be a dollar, please. That's not a gift. If I say, Mr. Teller, I want you to run around the block that's not a gift. That's a reward. If I say, Mr. Tellier, I'm going to watch you to make sure you live a perfect life in order for you to keep this pen. That's not a gift. A gift is absolutely free. No strings attached. Everybody understand that? Mr. Tellier understands that. He tells people that every week. All right? All right, so there you go. But how do you get it? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's a free gift. Eternal life is the gift of God. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. It's a free gift. So how do you make it your free gift? You receive. You do what? You take it. I accept it. And right now, if you know that you're a sinner, 
and you need Jesus out there, you know that you're a sinner, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, everybody needs a Savior, then receive the free gift of eternal life. That's faith. And when you do that, that's repentance. It all happens in one second. And there it is. Praise the Lord. There it is. Why would I do that with somebody? Why would I share that with somebody? I would share that with somebody because I love them. No, because I love Jesus enough. We're supposed to share with people that we love and like and with people we can't stand. We're supposed to share with everybody, even our enemies. Jesus said, love your enemies. Do good to them that despitefully use you. I believe that. That's in the Bible. Harry Winston was uh, one of the world's greatest jewel merchants. And uh, he stood there and watched as one of the best jewel salesmen in all of New York was talking to a person about buying a certain diamond, a piece of jewelry. And that person said, mm, I don't know. And so that person stepped away and Harry Winston stepped up. Did not say a word. He said, sir, may I hold that ring? Oh. Oh. Let me look at that. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful stone and perfectly cut. Oh, oh. And the man that was standing there said, I think I'll buy it. What was the difference? Was it the sales job that the salesman was trying to do? Or was it the fact that Harry Winston did something different? And the salesman said, how is it that you were able to sell that? And I was not. And he said, sir, you know how to sell diamonds. But I love diamonds. And people can tell the difference. And if you love Jesus, it'll be better than just trying to sell him to people. To show him, show the world how much he loves us and how much we love him back. There it is. Love Jesus enough to win souls. It was Charles Wesley who wrote this. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify a never-dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. Soul winning is just one beggar telling another beggar how to find bread. Just sharing the bread of life. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. Everybody bow your You've head. You've been viewing you a service at Central Baptist Church. We never dismiss the service without clearly presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is, that Jesus came to this earth and sinlessly lived for 33 years before he voluntarily gave his life. He died on the cross, he was buried, he rose from the dead, and he's alive forevermore. Through the shedding of his blood and through his victory at uh, the, the empty tomb, Jesus Christ now offers salvation to you. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you pray right now from your heart to God and ask Him to save you? Something like this. Dear God, just pray, Dear God, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I'm a sinner. I deserve to pay for my sins. I deserve to pay for my sins. I believe Jesus died to save me. I believe Jesus died to save me. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Right now, I receive the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Please take away my sins and take me to heaven when I die. Did you pray that prayer? Did you mean it? Wonderful. I want you to get in contact with us and let us know of your decision. Now, if you've already been saved, I want to encourage you to live the life that God would have you to live according to His Word. If you desire more instruction, more information, we'll be happy to supply it to you. We'd like to talk to you. The information is right here, and we'd love to speak to you. If you have any spiritual needs whatsoever, may God bless you.